Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, just getting weirder and weirder. The greetings. Uh, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to share you a little bit about how to light your scene. And it is pretty like underrated topic, lighting a scene. Uh, even when I tried to learn myself, I couldn't really find like a specific tutorial like for video games. So I just kind of kind of like uh, based on my experience working with uh, 3D animation and stuff. I'm like, oh, maybe this is how they do it or whatever. And maybe looking at the GDC talk and stuff. But anyway, uh, that's um, beside the point. Um, this also coincided with someone left a comment uh, from the previous video. Hey, can you do hey can you do a tutorial for world environment and dynamic lighting i liked your sky on the visual polish fps tutorial i'm not going to talk about the sky i'm going to talk about the dynamic lighting and world environment that they kind of like they meant and um so yeah so thanks for mx gengo g or mx g angel g i don't know how to pronounce your name but you know can you change your name please and yeah anyway so let's just get into it this is the scene. Um, so the first thing that I establish is the intention or the mood that I want for the scene. I think you need to do so as well. Like what kind of uh, things you want to emphasize, what kind of uh, mood that you want the environment to have. Uh, you need to set that first so you have a clear idea or clear picture on wh what to light and what not to light, right? Or what to left in the dark. So in this case, I actually want the the windows, uh, the walls wants to be kind of like left out in the dark, but still let the player know there is a wall right and i achieved that by the not the design i guess but by the layout of the wall itself the the wall has like the wall itself and then the lights right and the lights it has the emissive material so it's kind of like show oh there is a light and there is a light source and it just kind of makes sense that a room should have like a light source like this uh as like in an arena like this and just make that uh take into account the design of the environment itself right so that's what i want so i just left everything in the dark and also i modify the or i tinted the material the texture especially the albedo albedo uh into a little bit darker so it doesn't really like you know yellow bright like um, uh reflecting some lights and stuff right so i just want it to be a little bit subtle we'll just sit in the background and that's kind of like the little look that i'm trying to uh, achieve right so that's and also there is a uh, omni light uh in godot uh, there are they we have or godot have a uh, different type of lighting um source and this one directional light omni light and spotlight directional light basically is for a sun type of lights and then omni light is more like a light bulb that emitting a light in a sphere in a sphere shape spotlight is more in a cone um so yeah and I use all of them. Well, not directional light because I have indoor, uh, what is it? Indoor level, right? So anyway, so this is the wall. Uh, it is also intentional the way the wall is designed or the, wall, the way the wall looks, right? Um, next one. I want the player or I want the stage to be highlighted in the center of the stage or the centerpiece. I want it to be highlighted. So I add a bunch of uh, spotlights. Uh, in this case, I have like four cardinals direction like west south north and east uh kind of like lighting up and then shine it to the middle and it gives that nice um spread of lights spread of lights but yeah uh, and then the other one is the centerpiece where it's kind of like um a lamp not a lantern we call like a chandelier type of light where it's going to shine down to the centerpiece and uh one thing that you might want to consider also do not uh, enable the shadow for every single light because it will cost uh it will um what is it hinder the performance or slow down the performance uh it, it is costly so i only add the shadow uh and for this one uh the center lighting uh that is like a cone lighting shining down just to give the player like a or give a little bit of a contact shadow and you can also like um because this is not realistic right that's not the look that i'm looking for uh just to communicate to the player uh you have a spotlight that is gonna like put behind the model because again i want the back to be lit also uh because i want it to be clear the shape and so on and so forth so i add a spotlight that kind of um highlight the player it's also kind of makes sense if you put it like in the camera the camera has like a spotlight that's kind of light the object and stuff so again yeah 
and i guess it is a good rule of thumbs don't treat it as if it is like a realistic environment even a realistic environment in games usually have like some trickery to it that makes it uh more intentional the lighting doesn't really you know like work as in real world because sometimes real world doesn't really look uh functional not functional i guess like purposeful i don't know what to describe it but yeah usually in game you need to have a purpose right and to rely on realistic lighting usually it's not or it's kind of hard to achieve anyway uh so that's the spotlights um highlighting the center piece and then the contact shadow coming from the highlight that or the light source that coming from the camera itself um so yeah i think that concludes for the uh lighting setups oh i forgot there's actually a a reflection probe reflection probe is just to give details or more um details to the reflection map or just give more extra reflection so without it you you see that the emissive texture that is coming from the light on the wall does not really reflect it to the floor but if you add it the reflection probe then you can just see there is the difference right and so yeah that's uh reflection probe adding more details to it I don't really use GI. I don't really use like Voxel GI or SDF GI because I don't need it. It just, it just like for some reason slow down the game. Again, I want to have a lot of uh, enemies and stuff. So having that GI, I think is just slow down the performance and it doesn't really achieve like what I want it. But if you need that in your game, then so be it. But it's not the place for, uh, yeah, it's not for me. Uh, let's just say that. Um, yeah, reflection probe i think there's not much things to discuss you can just you know uh, play around with the settings and see what works for your game and at least for me i just check the box projection and interior enabling shadow enable shadow it doesn't really i don't i, I don't really see any difference so i just take that off um or check that off rather and so yeah don't really mess around too much um just clicking on the things that i that will change the look of it and so yeah um, yeah, so that's conclude the lights side of things. Let's move on to the world environment. World environment itself is the I don't know what it is to be honest. It's just like, like something that you need to add uh, if you don't want to have a default world environment. So you need to make your own. One thing that I want to emphasize: uh, you can ignore the background. Actually, you can just see the clear color. The clear color is just why do you show it outside? Uh, I think you just wanna set it to sky because it's black or you can just like custom color also it's black is the same it doesn't really affect that much so you could just ignore this one uh tone map uh tone map is really important you can set a, the default is linear excuse me linear and it looks kind of like flat like that i don't know i don't like the look of it and so i choose aces again i think there is like some valid option if you want to use like uh, reinhardt or filmic or aces but I think I love Aces more because it's kind of like give you that contrast to look um, that I want uh, with the game. And the tone map affects a lot of stuff like the glow itself. Let's talk about the glow. Uh, I'm skipping the SSR and the other option that I don't check because, um, yeah, I don't need to achieve it. So it, the tone map dictates the glow works also. So how contrasted it looks, how intense it looks, uh, how bright it looks, uh, you know, uh, adjacent not adjacent relatively to the background so the glow itself glow is just giving you that um interesting bloom effects right and some settings uh, the intensity strength and bloom again just play around uh with the settings yourself so you see how uh what kind of setting fits for your project and this is my these are my settings blend mode to additive i always love this one i think the other one is just kind of like lack of that oomph, you know i don't know how to explain it but yeah the, the additive is just work for me and then the last one, not the last one, I guess, volumetric uh, fog, volumetric light, volumetric fog. It's not fog, but volumetric one. This option is kind of like added, newly added to 4.x. I don't even like maybe 4.2. I might be wrong, but so this is a new option, at least, uh, yeah, relatively new. Uh, you enable it uh, to give that moody effect because that's the concept that I'm looking for, right? It, I want it to be moody. I want it to be kind of like um have some kind of uh, characters and i think fog in this case for my scene it really works to give that sense of oh something has happened and there are like smokes everywhere i kind of give that uh environmental storytelling i don't know, just make these things up in my head but 
this kind of sounds cool so i just said it and yeah you play around with the density albedo it's kind of like how, what the color of the light itself or the uh, fog itself and i think for me it's kind of like this darker washed out dirt color i don't know what the name of the color but yeah it's it works for me and so yeah that's it uh compositors i, I think this is just a good shout out to make your game look a little bit smoother you can get uh, add motion blur um maybe i'll talk about this in a separate video but i'll put down a link to a video for the creator of the shade of the compositor it's really good at it and you need to check out and it makes the game looks looks even better like smoother and stuff and uh, it, it can trick someone that oh, are you doing this in unreal 5 or something no i'm doing it in godot just because of this uh, compositor i would uh what is it leave the description or leave the link uh to the uh creator's uh video uh down below but yeah so that's basically it and some of some other stuff maybe talking about the dynamic lighting uh the bullet itself it has like an omni light that i'm emitting from the bullet so it kind of um you know interact with the environment and also for the other vfx like the explosion and also the muzzle flashes the bu the player bullets it all have its own light so just add more lights to it but again be mindful of the performances of your game if you want to have like a lot of tons of enemies in your game and you might want to consider not to add too much lighting to or light to the scene but with that being said i think that concludes everything i talked about the lighting setups and the world environment a little bit not really in depth uh, but yeah that's what i use to light this environment so with that being said thank you so much for watching until the end don't forget to like and subscribe again if you want to support the channel you can go to littlestriker.com slash or ko-fi.com slash littlestriker id and you can donate five bucks for the project or you can just buy my older projects and learn from it including the fp including the fps that mx game your g uh mentioned you can go there now i'm trying to focus playing and talk at the same time just to showcase a little bit of the lighting there Ooh, there's a lighting there and then um the explosion has lighting as well but not too intense but so yeah hey thank you so much for watching my name is Andrew Dengara. and i'll see you next time and bye yeah bye bye Die, you son of a gun. Oh.